I have a form here for creating a new person record. And right now I have two menus here in this form, one for selecting a country and another for selecting a state or province. Now this menu is very long and cumbersome and difficult to work with. So it would be much nicer if after the user chooses a country here, that it would automatically filter out the states to those that are inside of that country. So how do we do this and make this menu dynamic? First, let's take a look at the form template. You can see I have two menus here populated using collection select. And that's generally how you populate a belongs to association in a form. So you can see a person belongs to a country and a state and there is a country and state model for each of those as well. So these are all records in our database. So what I want to do here is filter out which states are displayed depending on the country that the user selects. And I'm going to be doing all of that through JavaScript on the client side, so that way it's nice and fast. However, to do this, I need to give a little bit more information about the states because right now there's no way for JavaScript to tell which country a given state belongs to. It's just one flat list of states. A nice way to do this is through a grouped menu. And it just so happens that Rails provides a nice method to do this called grouped collection select. Now it takes quite a few arguments here, so you may want to consult the documentation here for more information on how those arguments are used. Just keep in mind that if you're using form four and calling this method through a form builder, that the first argument here, object, is not used, so you'll want to skip that. So let's change this state collection select menu here to grouped collection select and it's still on the state ID column, but we need to select the uh, items we want to filter by first. In this case, we want to filter by the countries. So first select that. And then the next argument here, you want to pass in the name of the method that it should call to fetch the children or the items that are going to be the options. So in this case, we want to call states because if a given country has many states. And then the next argument is the label it should use for the country. So in this case, it should be name because that will go through each record and call name on that and use that for the label of the group by option. And then it will use ID and name for the state for each child. Everything else is the same. So now if we go to the states menu, you can see that the states are now filtered by their country. So this is not only provides a nicer user experience, but it also makes it so that our JavaScript has enough information that it can do the rest on its own by uh, filtering out the states based off of the country the user selects. Now there are some countries which I don't have states for in the database, but you could filter those out if you wanted to. So now let's work on the client side JavaScript using a coffee script here. Let's first make sure that the DOM is loaded. And then I want to fetch the states from the menu because we're going to need to store the content of that menu so that when we change it, we don't lose any of the information. So that states menu is called uh, person state ID. And then we want to fetch the inner content of this. So I'll just call HTML on this and that will fetch the uh, state options which are inside of that select menu. So now the states variable here just contains a string of the contents of that select tag. But if you're ever unsure, you can always call console.log and see what that variable is. And you can see that by reloading the page here with our console open. You can see that this is just a string containing all the various options inside of that state menu. All right, so we know we need to change the states that are displayed whenever the user changes their country. So let's fetch that country select menu is called person country ID. And then if I call in change on this, that will get triggered whenever the user selects a country. Now we need the name of the country that was selected. And to get that, we can call uh, again, person country ID and then call selected option there and that will return the selected option element in the side of that country select menu. And to uh, fetch the content of that, we can call text and that will give us the name of the country that was selected. And then we need to filter out our states HTML that we have there. And we can call filter on this to select the various options which match that given country. And to do that, we can call opt group and say uh, if the label is equal to uh, the uh, country because that's what the it uses the label attribute in the HTML to match that given country name and then we can call the uh, HTML call on this and that will fetch the contents of that opt group option which will be the states for that given country so now let's store whatever options are found here inside of a little options variable there and so if we found options 
then we want to replace those found options inside of our uh, state select menu. So that's called a person state ID. And then let's replace the content, so we can call HTML on this, with the found options. So that way it will just basically filter out the options to those inside of the option group which matches that given country. And so otherwise, let's make that uh, state ID empty there so that it doesn't display any options. All right, that was quite a bit of CoffeeScript, but let's see how it works. I'll reload here, and when I select a country, it now allows me to select a state or province within that country. However, if I select one that I don't have states for in the database, it's not going to display them in the menu here. Now, it would be a better user interface, though, if this state option was completely hidden when uh, the user doesn't choose a country that has states in it. That's a quick fix by just calling hide on our state menu here. Actually, we should probably hide our parent there. And then we can also um, hide it at the beginning as well so that it only shows up after they select a country. And let's show it when they uh, found some states. All right, let's try this again. Hit reload. Now we don't have a state menu because it's hidden, but once we select a country which has states, it shows up. But then once we uh, change our country, then the state menu disappears if there aren't states for that in the database. Now, one thing to watch out for though is if the country name has any special characters in it, because right now we're using that dynamically directly in our jQuery selection here, and it would be better if those were escaped in case maybe there's a single quote in there. So to escape that, what we can do is, let's make a new variable here called escaped country, and uh, it's the country name, and I'll just paste in some code to do this because it's quite a bit, but that's all that's needed to escape this for inserting dynamically into a jQuery selection. And then we can just use our escaped country instead of the normal one. There we go. Well, that's it. That's how you can make a menu, change a secondary menu dynamically, depending on what is chosen using option grouping. Now it's kind of neat to compare this with the technique I showed in the original episode 88 where I generated JavaScript dynamically and handled it all through there. This I feel is much more unobtrusive and uh, scales nicely when the user has JavaScript disabled and overall feels much simpler. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.